In this tutorial, let's focus on the panoramic sub-module uh, of this 3D imaging module of Plan Mechromexis software. So currently I'm here in the Explorer sub-module uh, of the 3D Im imaging module. So this is uh, the sub-module uh, where the volume gets opened by default uh, after capturing or importing or opening it uh, from the volumes list. So uh, let's start by uh, navigating to panoramic sub-module. So if we uh, click here on top of the Explorer text, uh, we see all the sub-modules uh, that we have in this license. So uh, let's select panoramic. And uh, let's first uh, take a look of, uh, of the views uh, that we see here. So uh, we have axial uh, view, sagittal uh, view, uh, then the panoramic view, and then uh, the 3D rendering uh, here in the corner. So uh, let's start by um, creating a panoramic view. So uh, we have here an automatic option, a panoramic auto fit that automatically places uh, this panoramic curve here. Uh, in, in the view. So uh, let's uh, make a click here. So this is a completely automatic function. Uh, it might depend a little bit on the volume, uh, what kind of result uh, we get. Uh, so this is, uh, this is now uh, the panoramic view generated uh, based on this uh, auto fit function. And naturally, uh, if we would like to adjust uh, or if we would like to get uh, just uh, uh, half of the arch, for example, or like uh, just to define uh, the curve manually and that's also possible. So uh, it's possible to start by uh, uh, adjusting uh, this axial view so that uh, we get the panoramic curve uh, drawn uh, on, on, that, on, the, uh, on the slice uh, where we would like that to be. And then uh, we can activate this uh, first icon here uh, for drawing a panoramic curve. So uh, here in the axial view, uh, we can just uh, click uh, in order to define uh, the curve based on which uh, this panoramic uh, view gets uh, generated here uh, in that view. So just by clicking with our left mouse button, uh, we can define uh, the panoramic uh, curve. And then we can finish with a uh, uh, right mouse button. So now uh, this panoramic view got uh, generated based on uh, the curve that we, we defined here. And uh, if we would like to uh, edit uh, this curve later, uh, we can activate here uh, this uh, edit panoramic curve so that we get it uh, active again. And so uh, now we get these uh, points visible again and we could just uh, grab them with uh, our mouse button so that we could uh, we could edit or we could drag them uh, to, to make uh, the panoramic curve uh, shorter, for example. Or also uh, it's possible if you would like to get uh, uh, more details here in the panoramic curve, we might add more points uh, here in the middle. So if we keep control down on the keyboard, uh, we get this pen-like icon and we can click uh, on new points. Uh, so this allows us to uh, still adjust uh, the panoramic curve. And uh, likewise, if we give control down uh, and we put our put this uh, pen icon on top of uh, some existing point, uh, we can delete that point. So with control down, uh, we can get that pen icon uh, visible. And uh, for the same patient, uh, we can have uh, several panoramic uh, uh, curves uh, saved. Uh, so we can get the list of all the panoramic curves uh, if we open this. Uh, icon here. Uh, so here we have a list of uh, uh, also all the previous uh, curves that we had made. Uh, I could now uh, maybe delete uh, one of the previous curves so I can uh, select a curve uh, in the list and then I can use this uh, Trascan icon here in order to delete uh, that panoramic curve. I will now select uh, the one that I made uh, uh, just uh, recently. And here uh, in the panoramic module, uh, we can adjust uh, a little bit uh, the selection uh, of the views. So firstly here, if I would click on this uh, show hide uh, renderer uh, icon here, I could hide uh, the rendering, the 3D rendering. And also there are some further options. Uh, we see these uh, small uh, icons here in between the views. If we drag uh, on them, uh, we can change uh, the relative size of the different views. Works also for this. 
And then uh, additionally, uh, we have these small uh, arrows here in the corners, so we can use them uh, to hide uh, the other uh, view here uh, completely. We have them also here and uh, here. So that way we can uh, adjust uh, the layout a little bit. And then uh, let's continue adjusting uh, our panoramic view. Uh, so here, naturally, all these uh, normal controls apply uh, on these slice views as well. So if we have this move, rotate, volume active, we can uh, grab, for example, this view with our right mouse button and we can uh, adjust uh, uh, the curvature of this panoramic view so we can fix uh, the occlusal plane uh, so that it uh, looks uh, straighter. And uh, if we would like to make uh, uh, some adjustment uh, on the coronal view here, we don't uh, have the coronal view available, but we could have uh, made those adjustments uh, in the Explorer submodule. And then there's uh, the function uh, export to other views. Uh, and, and we could use that uh, in order to transfer uh, the coronal adjustments uh, also to this uh, panoramic uh, submodule. And uh, we could change uh, this uh, focal plane here uh, from where uh, the view is taken. If we, for example, deactivate the toggle zoom and then uh, we use our mouse wheel in order to browse here in the panoramic uh, stack. So uh, this focal plane uh, gets moved uh, accordingly. So we can change uh, the radius of uh, the panoramic curve. And then uh, also here uh, we can adjust, uh, for example, uh, the panoramic slice thickness. So uh, this green uh, plane here is the focal plane and then uh, the slice thickness of a panoramic curve we can see in uh, yellow. So then uh, if we open this viewport settings here, uh, we get to adjust uh, the thickness. So now we saw that that increased, so there will be more information here uh, in the panoramic view. And uh, what else uh, we have here? Uh, we have also this uh, auto uh, in enhancement, uh, automatic uh, enhancement of the panoramic curve, so that adjusts uh, the contrast and sharpness uh, of the panoramic curve. We saw that that uh, changed a little bit uh, with the function. Let's uh, then uh, take a look at further uh, adjustment for the uh, for the panoramic view. So uh, there's also autofocus uh, available for adjusting uh, uh, the appearance of the panoramic view. So uh, if we activate here uh, in this 3D rendered view, if we activate now uh, the panoramic plane, uh, we see that it looks uh, straight uh, like this, a straight plane. And uh, then uh, if we apply this autofocus, so also here uh, on this panoram uh, on this sagittal slice view, uh, we can see that this uh, panoramic focal plane uh, looks straight. Uh, so it doesn't maybe take into account uh, the, the anatomy that well. But let's uh, then try uh, with autofocus on. So let's click here on this icon that has F uh, next to it. And uh, now we saw that uh, the software looked for um, the most uh, prominent anatomy in the data and it adjusted uh, the focal plane uh, accordingly. Also here uh, we see that now uh, the panoramic plane uh, looks more, looks like it's uh, following uh, the anatomy uh, more in detail. So that uh, might uh, improve our panoramic view. And here in the axial view uh, we see uh, in addition to, uh, to the new uh, improved uh, panoramic focal layer, we see also these uh, autofocus layers. If we would like to hide uh, any of these, uh, we could open this uh, uh, default settings here and uh, we could uh, hide, for example, these uh, extra layers uh, by clicking here. And then uh, we can further uh, adjust uh, the panoramic view uh, by uh, defining uh, the data range. So if we would like to, let's say that we are more interested uh, in this, uh, uh, in this uh, place where, where the tooth is missing, we could uh, hide uh, the upper part of the panoramic curve. So then we could uh, activate this uh, define uh, data range button here and we could drag here 
these sliders in order to define uh, the area uh, that will be visible. So let's click on OK and now, now we see that uh, our panoramic uh, view got adjusted uh, accordingly. And let's then see uh, one more option for uh, adjusting uh, the panoramic view. So firstly I could uh, for example here uh, let's start by uh, adding a couple of uh, more uh, slices and let's uh, maximize these panoramic slices. So uh, I could uh, change uh, I could change uh, the 3D rendering. So here why we see these uh, slices um, a little bit differently uh, depends on the uh, on um, on the on the on the slice uh, based on which uh, uh, these were generated. So we have a couple of uh, different uh, uh, focal layers uh, based on which these views were generated. And so um, how I can still uh, change the visualization uh, of these um, uh, views, I can click here on uh, rendering modes. So here I have uh, the same kind of rendering modes that are available also for the 3D rendered view here in the 3D imaging uh, module. So I could change here and select uh, different kind of renderings uh, for, for the slices. So now all of them uh, got this uh, maximum intensity projection uh, rendering but I could then also uh, right click on top of these single views and I could get uh, the same kind of list uh, available here. So then uh, I could even apply a different kind of uh, rendering uh, for each of the uh, for each of the uh, slice views. So this way I could uh, have uh, several visualizations of uh, of this panoramic uh, view. And uh, then uh, here under 3D rendering now uh, we have uh, these different uh, panoramic curves. So here in the corner uh, we see the respective number for each. So then we could uh, select one of these and we could apply uh, these uh, adjustments uh, for that view. And finally, uh, to finish, uh, we have these panoramic uh, tools here in the panoramic sub-module, but actually we have also this row uh, in the implants or cross-sections uh, sub-module. So also there uh, we can make uh, panoramic views.